Welcome to worship here at First United Methodist Church in Elon this second Sunday in the season of Advent. We're glad that you're here to worship with us today. And as we begin our worship this morning, we're going to begin with a reading from the prophet Isaiah as we light this second candle in our Advent wreath, the candle of peace with the Chrismon family. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over all her sins. Listen, it is the voice of someone shouting, Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and the hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. The voice said, shout. Shout, I ask. What should I shout? Shout that people are like the grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is with people. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountaintops, shout aloud, O Jerusalem, shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lamb in his arms, holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep to their young. Oh God, we light the second candle of Advent. We seek our comfort, but mighty and tender. You come, prepare our hearts to be transformed by you. Saving God, look upon your word and heal your land and your people. Prepare us to be changed. This Advent, teach us to be tender and just as you are. Amen. Come thou wisdom from on high, and order all things far and nigh. To us the path of knowledge show, and calls us in her ways to go. Let us pray together our prayer of confession for this morning. Holy and loving God, we have dwelt in darkness and preferred it to the light. We have been proud of our accomplishments and despaired over our shortcomings, smooth down the mountains of our pride and lift up the valleys of our doubts, open a path in the wilderness of our lives that we might find our way to you again. Refine us and prepare us once again for life in your kingdom. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Amen. In this season suspended between hope and fulfillment, may we never forget what God has done for us. May we be overwhelmed by Christ's mercy, which flows into our hearts wave after wave 
after winning. May we be honest about the darkness that is within us and perceptive of the light around us. May we make straight the pathway of the Lord, that together we may see God's glory revealed in forgiveness, in redemption, and in love. one thing to say, I love you, but it is quite another to act out that love. The, the father who sits down on the floor to play with his children after a long day at work, that is showing love. The daughter who tends to her ailing mother day after day is demonstrating love. God provided the ultimate demonstration of love when he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. When we follow Jesus' example and we do something tangible, we show people our love. When you love someone, you may do little or sometimes even big things that help that other person feel, see, and understand your love. Today, you can take action to show the love that you have for our church and for our community and for God. As you prepare your tithes or offerings today, or as you give them during our offertory, let's not give out of a sense of duty or obligation, but let's give from our heart out of a sense of love. The link for our online giving will be found on the screen, as well as the mailing address of the church. Let us give unto God our tithes and our offerings.
Our text for today comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the first chapter, beginning in verse 18. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man, and he did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quiet. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded, and he took Mary as his wife. But he did not have relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. And then the story continues in chapter 2, after Jesus' birth. We begin in verse 13. After the wise men had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up and flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through his prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel because those who are trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that a new ruler of Judea was Herod's son Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then, after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophet had said. He will be called. A Nazarene. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, is it just me, or does it seem like just about every time we encounter Joseph here in Matthew's gospel, he's like taking a nap? Joseph is, is contemplating how he is going to break this engagement with Mary because he just found out that she's pregnant. He knows good and well he is not the father. So he goes to bed determined to kind of take care of this quietly in the morning to kind of put this all behind him and move on. But then while he's sleeping, before he could do that, an angel appears to him in a dream and tells him, no, 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 Joseph, don't do that. Don't, don't break it off with Mary. No, no. Go through with it all and, and go ahead and marry her and, and take care of her and her child, God's child. That she's carrying. It's okay, Joseph does that. But then once the baby arrives, and the angels, and the shepherds, and the wise men, because you know, when you have a new baby, everybody wants to come and see the new baby. So Joseph is, is trying to kind of juggle this new parenting thing with, with little sleep and probably even less confidence with this whole house full or, or stable full, whatever, of, of company. And he is surely exhausted and overwhelmed by all of this. And, and so once the company has finally left, the shepherds are back in the fields, the angels are back up in heaven, the wise men are back in the east. Mary has put all the baby gifts away. She's unwrapped them and, and put them where they belong. She's probably addressed all those thank you notes and got them in the mail. Joseph is catching some Z's like any tired new dad is going to do. When he has another dream, same angel, but new message. Joseph, get up now, immediately, right now. Go head to Egypt. Take, take Mary, take the baby, and go. Because Herod wants to kill this kid, so you got to get out of here. 
So Joseph gets up off the couch, rubs the sleep off his eyes, pulls on some sweatpants, throws on a hat, tosses a diaper bag in the minivan, buckles Jesus in the car seat, and, and away they go with Mary dozing in the passenger seat. And then they get to Egypt. And so they, you know, they, they settled in to life there. They find a nice little you know, one-bedroom apartment a couple blocks from the Nile. Joseph gets a stall in the marketplace and sets up his little carpentry shop there, and maybe Jesus heads to, to preschool, and Mary joins the, the PTA, and, you know, everything is good for a while. Until one day, Joseph is just resting his eyes when that pesky angel shows up again. Behind his eyelids, there she is, in yet another dream. And so now, according to the angel, that the danger has passed, and Herod is dead, so Joseph can head back safely to Nazareth with Mary and, I don't know, maybe toddler age Jesus. I don't know which is worse, traveling from Nazareth to Bethlehem on the back of a donkey when you're nine months pregnant or traveling from Egypt all the way to Nazareth with a teething toddler in the midst of his terrible twos. Let's hope that uh, the song that tells us no crying he makes wasn't just true for that one night, but was kind of a, a blanket statement about Jesus' behavior in general. Or, you know, maybe they were in Egypt a little longer. Maybe it was kind of teenager Jesus, kind of sitting sullenly in the back seat, asking, are we there yet? A <laughs> hundred times an hour. As we contemplate the theme, this Advent and Christmas season of God made real, we look to the story of Joseph today to show us what, what God made real close to us looks like. We talked last week about Mary and God being made real within us, within the body of Christ that, that, that is our church family. How God is made real within this body as, as we love one another and care for each other and reach out to connect and reach out in concern and prayer for one another. And so this week, we look a little further away and we look to Joseph, who is close to Mary and Jesus. And every time Joseph closes his eyes, it seems he dreams angelic dreams. And this angel is always telling Joseph to, to do something for the good of Mary and Jesus. Don't break the engagement with Mary, Joseph. Take Mary as your wife, Joseph. Name the baby Jesus, Joseph. Take Mary and Jesus to Egypt, Joseph. Bring Mary and Jesus home to Nazareth, Joseph. Gosh, Joseph sure does a, a lot. Or these two people who were close to him, doesn't he? I imagine that he, he feeds them, he shelters them, he keeps them safe, provides for them, protects them. And you know, I wonder what it looks like for us when we become like Joseph, when we take on that role of feeding, sheltering, keeping safe, providing and protecting those close to us. I don't mean the person sitting next to you on the couch or across from you at the table. I don't mean the people that we live with, not our friends and family. It's not what I mean. That's not where we're going today. And since last week, we kind of started this all by, by talking in terms of our, our collective identity as the body of Christ. Let's kind of keep with that image and think about it this way. So if we are the body of Christ, the church, so let's just say that, that for us here at FUMC Elon, that, that this identity as a body of Christ has, has something to do with, with this space, with, with this particular location, with this address. Right? Bodies, whether it's, it's a physical body of an individual person or the body of Christ, the church, we, all bodies have to exist in some kind of physical space, some kind of physical location. I mean, yes, the church absolutely is universal and global in scope and nature. It spans across all time and all space. All believers who were and are and are yet to come, yet we are all part of one body in Christ. This is very true. No doubt about that. But, but it's somewhere between this expansive global view of the church and, and this individualized personal version of, of me and my friends and family. It's somewhere in the middle of that that I want us to land today. 
since Mary's story has inspired us to make God real within us, within this body of Christ, and, and to do that by caring and connecting with our FUMC Elon family, praying and calling and sending cards, then maybe Joseph's story of God made real close to him will help us find ways to make God real to those close to us in this location. Church family, if this body of Christ is located to some degree or connected to this space at 1630 Westbrook Avenue in Elon, then, then what can inspire us to, to feed and shelter, to care for and provide for those close to us, like Joseph did for Mary and Jesus who were close to him? So earlier today, I, I thought about that, and I kind of walked around outside to see what is close to us here. And you see what I see. What do you see? The blessing box. The church is right here. The blessing box is right out there in the parking lot. I mean, that's pretty close. And I think that sounds like a really awesome way to make God real close to us the way that, that Joseph did, by feeding and caring for and providing those who are close to us right here in this location. Those are close to us in this community who are hungry and in need of God's provision and God's sustaining care. During this pandemic, surely the number of folks in our community who are going to be needing food, that's only going to increase. And as Christmas draws near, there's thoughts of where is money coming from for Christmas presents, and, and as the weather gets colder and heating costs go up, as more folks are are staying in and avoiding crowds. That means possibly less people in restaurants, less people in local stores. Staff may be cut, hours may be cut, wages may fall. For a lot of reasons, this time of year, folks are really going to find their funds are just stretched to the max. And when we provide food through the blessing box, what that means is families don't have to pay for food, so that's one less thing they got to worry about, so they can divert funds they would have used to buy food. They can divert those to other necessities. They'll have more money for utilities, rent, medical expenses, gas, car insurance, those kinds of things. So here's the nitty-gritty. Here's how you can be part of making God real to those close to us through the blessing box. Number one, just sign up to fill it. You can go to our church website, elonfumc.org. There's a slide with that right there if you need it. And then just scroll down to where it says sign up for the blessing box. Go to the grocery store on your designated day, buy groceries, and if you're doing contactless pickup or pre-ordering groceries, you can still do all that for the blessing box. Pick up your groceries, come back to church, put the groceries in the blessing box. And if you do it this way, you, you just pay for the groceries yourself. Some must do that. There's a couple other ways you can do this, however, you may not be aware of. The second way sounds similar to the first. Sign up to fill the blessing box, go to the grocery store, buy the groceries, put the groceries in the blessing box. But here's where it's different. Instead of paying for it yourself and then going home, you can pay for it but bring the receipt into the church office. And you can fill out a form to get reimbursed for filling the blessing box. And thanks to the generosity of a lot of folks in our church, in our community, and online, we have a good bit of money in a blessing box fund. So some people gave money so that other people can go get the groceries and not have to pay for them because someone else already paid. Maybe more people can fill the blessing box if, if you do it this way. But there's yet another way. Sign up to fill the blessing box. But then, before you go get your groceries, call the church office a couple of days beforehand and make a plan to come and get the church credit card. And then take the church credit card to the store and buy the groceries with the church credit card. Come back to the church, put the groceries in the blessing box, come back into the church office, and turn in the credit card with the receipt. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. Out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. Oh, come to us, abide with us. Receive now this benediction. Your season comes, Lord. Once again, you feed your flock like a shepherd. Come once again and gather up the children, the oppressed, the sick, the lonely, the humble, the rejected of the earth. Turn our hearts toward the least of your children. For if we lose them, we become lost. And this Advent season, join us together with neighbors, with strangers, and especially with this, our own household of faith. Bring us to your light in times of darkness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>